It's even worse when she's driving, because guys are the worst front seat drivers. Run the light, run the light, run the light! <laughs> oh, you could have made it! <laughs> I saw that truck, we would have missed the truck! <laughs> now we gotta sit here for a minute. <laughs> if only I hadn't lost my license. <laughs> But you know what happened, guys? You get out there in that traffic, you start getting competitive with the other drivers, and that road warrior mentality takes over. And whenever I start driving like this, my wife will start talking to me. Now she thinks she's calming me down, she's actually pouring gasoline on the fire. You gonna keep driving like this? Cause you're driving like you wanna kill yourself. Well, I'm in the car with you and I don't wanna die, so just let me out. Don't look at me, just look at the road and nod your head if you understand what I'm saying. You can let me out and pick me up on the way back cause you're driving like a maniac, maniac. Just driving like a maniac, maniac. Maniac, you think I'm driving like a maniac? I'll show you some maniac driving here. <laughs> I'll take this car, I'll drive right through that guardrail over there. And later when they come to pull us out, they wonder what happened, then they'll go by the look on his face, he just got tired of listening to her crap. <laughs> Then I sit there like an idiot waiting for her to say something back and she may not do that. You know? See, women can wait, they can hold their anger. They can let it build. See, guys, it's confusing to guys, because guys only have two speeds of anger, zero to Mach 10. <laughs> but if my wife gets that quiet anger going, you know what I mean, guys, that quiet anger, you don't really notice it at first, but this quiet anger has the unique ability to suck all the noise out of the room you're sitting in. <laughs> all of a sudden, you can't hear anything else but her breathing. <laughs> what that does is sets you up to ask the question. You know what the question is, you know what the answer to the question is before you ask the question, you gotta ask it anyway. What's wrong, babe? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> Which means you gotta ask the question again. It's like you're digging your own grave. What's wrong, babe? How deep you want me to put this thing anyway? Because you wanna work it out. You wanna work out any problems. You know, you've heard this one before. Never go to bed angry. I don't know how many people have told me that. Never go to bed angry. Which is a great theory. Looks good on paper. Doesn't always work in real life. You know, sometimes you're just gonna stay angry at each other, just go to bed angry. Anyway, just go to bed angry, it doesn't matter. You're just gonna keep the fight going, go to bed. What happens is you end up going to bed, you take up defensive positions on each edge of the bed. You got that big DMZ no man's land in between you there. <laughs> and you dare not enter it either. Oh, you'll think about it sometime during the night. You go, well, I just kinda roll over there and accidentally touch her, she'll touch me back and we'll make up. Get back to your side, all right, I'm back, I'm back, I'm back. <laughs> Because whenever that happens, I try to sleep, but I just end up staring at the clock radio all night long. 158, toss, toss, turn, turn. 159, toss, toss, turn, turn. 201, who must have dozed off for a minute there? Because I sleep next to the clock radio, that's my job. You know that? One of you. One of you has to sleep next to the clock radio. Now, I remember my wife sucker me into that job. She played on my male ego. Oh, I don't think I could ever figure out how to work one of those. <laughs> All right, back up here. You're right, it's a very dangerous piece of equipment, you know. Don't look at it directly. Put those goggles on, I got it for you over there. Now, I'm the idiot who wakes up every morning going, erm, erm, Because we all do basically the same thing. We set the clock radio an hour ahead of when we really want to get up. Then we just bang away on that drum, don't we? <laughs> um, ooh, five more minutes sleep. Um, ooh, another five. Ooh, I'm really resting now. <laughs> oh, this way to sleep, just like this. I'll set the alarm 11, I'll bang until seven in the morning. Get a good night's sleep, and a darn good workout for my arm. I'll get two of them, that way it won't be lopsided. I'll get, I'll get some... So what you do is you wake up, hit the alarm, and try to figure out what kind of things you can cut out doing and stay in bed a little longer. Let's see if I don't eat breakfast. There's 10 more minutes so I can get sleeping. Let's see if I don't take a shower. No, I don't need a shower. I'm all right. Like, don't move around. You know. Let's see if I don't go to work. There's eight more hours. All right, that's the way. Right. Thank you very much, folks. Had a nice drive over here. I don't, I don't care when I hit the freeway, what time of day it is. I hit the freeway, I hit that same condition every time. That phenomenon where all the traffic stops for about an hour. Then you get up to 50 miles an hour for 30 feet. And you stop for another hour and a half, then 60 miles an hour for 20 feet. It's like you're in the middle of a big slinky moving down the freeway. <laughs> I'd always keep expecting to see some sort of reason for all this stop and start. Maybe a gas truck explosion up ahead or someone dumped a bucket of sand on the road. But there's no reason. I just imagine one guy way up front going, <laughs> Oh, here we go, here we go. No, we're not, no, we're not. We're going for third gear. No, we're not. 
this is hot. This is hot. <laughs> and you finally break clear, you want to make some time, then there'll be a state trooper doing 55 miles an hour. Love it. Then there'll be a whole pack of cars following right behind him. Everyone's waiting for the trooper to pull off so they can get back up to 80 miles an hour again. But sometimes the trooper stays on too long, and someone will lose patience and peel away from the pack at 56 miles an hour. They start making a move, everyone else is going, go, man, go! And you know there's a lot of pressure in that car. Here we go, baby, don't look at him now, don't look at him. Don't look at him, act like he's not there. There he goes, here we go, all right, here we go. We gotta get going. Gotta get home. Gotta go. Gotta get home, time for America's Funniest Videos. Gotta get home, gotta watch it. That show, that show is really sick if you watch that show, man. You know, you know they give $10,000 each week for the funniest videos, you know. Now, you know some people are going to start endangering their families for $10,000. You know? you know? All right, dear, put the boy up in the tree. Put him way up here. All right, I'm going to saw the tree down, whack like we don't know he's up here. All right? Hold on, boy. Hold on, boy. Daddy! Daddy! Hold on, boy. It's your college money. Hold on. Now think about that stuff. I'm going to be a father now. Chris Christopherson's going to be a father. I'm going to be a father. Coincidence? Maybe. <laughs> but that's it, you know. My wife and I got married June 4th. She got pregnant June 10th. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> it's rough when a woman in the beginning. It's really rough because she doesn't know because the signs are so confusing. And a woman doesn't know because the signs are the same for beginning of menstrual cycles are for early part of pregnancy. A woman has swollen, tender breasts, raging hormones. She's fatigued easily. God could have helped us out a lot here if he had given a woman different signals. Like if a woman's pregnant, have her hair shoot straight up in the air. <laughs> You know, not for the whole nine months, just for a couple of days. So, wow, now, you know, it actually it was actually an accident. We didn't plan to have a child. We're blessed. We're very happy. We didn't plan for it. My wife was using birth control, got pregnant anyway. Of course, as soon as I found out, I started strutting around the living room like a rooster. Oh, yeah. Take more than diaphragm, stop my boys. <laughs> Don't know if it's a boy or a girl, don't care. Just as long as it's healthy, that's all right. Of course, my dad wants a boy. Carry on the family name, boy would be good. Like I need a male heir to the throne. You know, you know someday, son, all this furniture will be yours. <laughs> of course, my wife, you know, she's like under a hormonal tidal wave. You know, she's turning into a character from a Tennessee Williams play. Eight and a half months pregnant, I'm helping her set up the baby room. She's going, oh, put, put, the, put the lamp over there. No, put the lamp over, oh, that lamp's not gonna work in here. I'm gonna be a terrible mother. <laughs> 